Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book creators and supporters. It's December 15th, 2020. I'm John Swinimer. If you have a comment, criticism, or question, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this special episode, I take a look back at 2020 with a special focus on libraries. The podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. And don't forget about the new YouTube channel. While we endured these unprecedented times, one of the many results of the lockdowns and shutdowns is the closure of libraries. Libraries have been the home of many events, gathering like-minded individuals to share ideas and discover new ones. Unfortunately, comic book events have also been impacted as a result of these times. For this specific 2020 in-review feature, comic book creators provide their personal opinions about the value libraries and library events such as comic conventions have on fostering comic book reading and creation. So, without further ado, here's my chat with comic book creators about the value of libraries and their impact on comic books. Dan Collins said, I think WitCAF, like WitCAF and other library events are very important because they're free and because they attract a different type of crowd than a convention would. Like my experiences with WitCAF in the past, you know, you're sitting at your table and then, you know, some a five or six year old kid will just wander up because they're at the library for something else and just start chatting. And, you know, it's a chance for you to talk to people who wouldn't necessarily come to a convention who might not even read comics, but they just see what's happening. And because it's a free event, they can get in and enjoy it. And I always try to, I always try to have something for the people who are there that didn't know there was a convention coming, you know, just something to give them to take away so that maybe they will get excited about comics because you never know what's going to be some kid's first experience that causes them to fall in love with the medium. Dave Bishop had this to add. I think what's cool about libraries is they're open to everyone. And, I mean, the, the comic cons and the comic conventions, they're open to everyone too. But they're kind of specialized in a way. Whereas these library events are really open to people who are reading. So you get a wide range of people in there who may not even know that it's happening. You know, and they'll come in and, you know, they'll meet artists, they'll meet writers they'll just meet people and it's a lot more intimate and it, it can allow for like a deeper discussion or engagement between the side, both sides of the table, you know, something like Whitcalf, I know they do a really, really good job of promoting it and they have their panels and discussions and, you know, they really reach out to their library audience and they promote it and they talk about it and they, you know, when they have panels or they have artist discussions or when they do anything, you know, they, they really engage their audience. They know their audience. And that's, that's key for just about anywhere. Derek Barton offered. Well, I think uh, like Whitcalf and the um, other various local libraries and shows, uh, what they do is um, they kind of, uh, put that out in a place like in places that are easily accessible for people to get at. When I was uh, starting, when I was starting out like fan expo started out when I was halfway through high school, going to Toronto for a special weekend that seemed a little far reaching sometimes, but you know, being able to go to the local library, not get charged a cover charge mm -hmm. and be able to kind of freely walk around and talk to and um, talk to a lot of artists. Both it's a lot. A few of these shows have not only had like local artists like myself, but even local artists that have been able to crack that. You know, have worked for established companies like Marvel or DC. So like it, it's, I guess being like super accessible, not as crowded as like your typical convention, or have the stress of like asking like an like an artist oh what do i like can i show you my artwork mm -hmm. it, right. like it's a more intimate setting so you can actually 
discuss art and in a collaborative environment too. Derek Chow offered his opinion. I think as a comic consumer, whether you're someone who wants to create comics or read comics, there are so many great festivals such as, you know, Whitcalf and just locally so many um, small and large festivals and conventions that you can go to to meet creators and to find new books. And I think it's a great time to be a fan and it's a good time to sort of get up there. Well, not during the pandemic, but, you know, get out there, maybe digitally meet people, um, follow people's Twitters and Instagrams. I think, like, the great thing about comics is I think a lot of the gates are opening and there are a lot more varied voices out there. So it's a really exciting time to, you know, get out there and hear some of those voices. Gibson Quarter said... Well, I think libraries play a huge role because obviously they foster reading and, and most of the libraries, the, the one great thing about graphic novels uh, having such a boom in the last 10 years is you can get really good comics and graphic novels at libraries to check out. So you can just immerse yourself in styles from the, you know, the super cartoony Scotty Young type stuff to Frank Whiteley's work to a whole bunch of different art styles and subjects, right? So I use the library, I, I use the library here in Toronto all the time. And in WITCAF events uh, and things of that nature, Mississauga Library, things of that, they really help promote, um, I think, take the some of the mysticism out of comics when you can you know, read the books and see the people creating them and talk to how it's done. I think it's very important for, for, the, for the grassroots of the industry, and, and I love it. I, I love doing library shows, and I really miss the fact that we weren't able to do WITCAF because of COVID. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if you have any favorite memories, though, from past events that you can share. Nothing springs to mind in particular. I thought the Whitcalf was a great show. I guess the memory that does spring swing to mind, and I don't know how topical this is, but my aunt came to see me. She she lives oh. in, in Oshawa, so she came out to the last Whitcalf <laughs> show and, and surprised me and, and showed up, and that was really, really nice. So that would probably be one of my more favorite uh, show memories as it pertains to library shows. Yeah. Nice. That's a good one. I don't know if that counts, John, but, but yeah, that's... absolutely. Be- because I think what it does, just because maybe for people who don't know, there is no fee to enter these library events. You just are browsing the library as opposed to conventions or or other, uh, you know, paid events, right? It, there's a dichotomy there between. Well, yeah, and that's that's a good point. Actually, I hadn't really even factored that in, John. But you're right. You get. I guess if this sounds correct, library shows are a little more wholesome in that you get a lot more of a diverse kind of a lot more kids a lot more people that maybe weren't into comics but are suddenly realizing hey this is pretty cool um that you don't get it like you know fan expo or the new york you know calgary con or whatever uh so yeah yeah, i I hadn't even thought about that but yeah i I did talk to and and made a number of new fans and and i personally love you know just chit chatting with kids that have an artistic vibe because i remember being that kid awkward and had no one to talk to that shared my my interests when i was young uh, so I, I look forward to that aspect at, at library shows for sure. Greg Highland offered this. Well, I know that more and more libraries are getting into comics. And actually, my sister-in-law is a librarian, and she pushed hard to get comics in libraries. That's great. Um, and I'm I'm seeing it more and more. You know, how popular all these little, like, li- like Whitcaft, Events like that all over are, like, super popular, and uh, I've really missed them this year. Jay Torres opinioned. Well, I think it's huge. My first exposure to comics, graphic novels, was the school library, uh, and, of course, later the community library. You know, I discovered Tintin and Asterix and Lucky Luke and Smurfs and all those kinds of things at the library. So it starts there as, as a reader. And then that hopefully inspires you to write and draw your own stories. And if you're lucky like me someday, when you actually start doing this kind of stuff, you get invited to to do readings and festivals like Whitcalf. And that gets, you know, gets your work out there to other people who hopefully read it and uh, maybe are also inspired to do their own comic. So it's sort of like a nice little circle of life kind of thing. Jerome Cabanatan had this to say. Maybe I've been living under a rock. But I just, you know, the the first event that I went to at a library was WITCAF. And I know, I know, T, I know T, TCAF did it. I know, uh, I think uh, Dartmouth has one too. Uh, but like things like a, a comic arts festival, you know, like it's speaking from my experience at WITCAF, it was 
way better than any con like any other con that i would that i would go to just because the nature of the library is about reading it right rather than rather than what mcu movie is out or like any of that stuff when it comes to pushing reading not in any bad way but like when it gets to by promoting reading and uh, and art and and writing and creating i think i think a library is just at its core it's a vital part of the community that i don't think people appreciate as much just because there's other there's other ways to get information now having uh, an event in a library environment or having the library when i started seeing libraries hold graphic novels right mm-hmm. hold graphic novels and trade paperbacks like that was heaven like i would have wished to have that you know as, as exactly like, yeah like, i don't know how many times i've took out like the single tintin or took out the single tintin or like just because i couldn't find anything cool enough i grabbed like those eyewitness books of like mm-hmm. weapons and I would just go into that, you know, had I had, you know, like an all ages Spider-Man or like even like a Calvin and Hobbes collection. Right. Yeah. Like Bill Watterson, it, it, I really always liked it growing up, but it went over my head. And only as really an adult did I appreciate the amount of craft that was involved in what he did because I didn't notice it. It just flew through my head. Julia Louise Pereira from Carpos Collective said this. I like truly value like the library system and like how they're like so community based and how they always want to like engage with the public. I find like often like um, commodified spaces that are just like purely for like privatized, like not public. It's kind of like a club and you kind of have to be like either like wealthy to get in or you have to be in a certain crowd. But libraries are kind of like open for everybody, whether they're like artists or not artists or whatever, just someone like for a new book. it's very open to everybody. It's very accessible. And I think I appreciate that the most because art is made for everybody. I feel like I hate that like stupid elitism that happens. Yes. It's like it's like <laughs> art is only for certain people. Like, oh, if you walk into like the AGO and you don't understand a painting, like, oh, <laughs> you don't understand. Oh, the historical content. Like, nah, that's dumb. Like people can like interpret things however they want like art is made for everybody art is not made for just the historians or just the you know like you know like the high class you know and I feel like libraries are like really filling like this crucial area where you're connecting with like the public who are you know deserving to like see and experience art and the artists you know like bridging (laughs) bridging the gap you know like I I really appreciate that Kathleen Lacey had her opinion. Well, I already talked a little bit earlier about when I was learning how to draw when I was younger and actually taking library books out and just not even just comics, but sort of creative stuff in general. I did a lot of library events when I was younger. I think a a few of them actually centered around comics But uh, those were, like, really good opportunities in terms of, like, again, just, like, giving you the idea of, like, what you are able to do, like, like what the scope of things are. I have a fairly unique situation in that the first WICCAF I went to, I wasn't an exhibitor. I had submitted a comic I made for the comic contest they'd done in the adult category. And I actually ended up winning that year. Oh, congratulations. That's great. Yeah. So I was already kind of like keying up in terms of this is something I want to take more seriously. This is something that I like really want to polish so that I can do this professionally And that was a moment of validation in terms of, like, yes, the stuff I'm making, like, is good. When people, you know, see it, they do like it. And I ended up reaching out later that year. And the second WICCA was my first time ever tabling at a convention ever. So there's multiple parts to that. There's the fact that these programs exist in the first place and allow people to engage with them but also 
you know, for someone like me, it provides a bit of an entry point in terms of, you know, being able to, you know, display and eventually sell and in a fairly, like, comfortable environment. Manfred von Volte said this. Right. I think any time that you take comic books and graphic novels and you take them out of the stereotypical comic shop or convenience store and you're predicating them with learning brings brings new insights yeah okay. and when the Whitby library does this they're really really doing the community and all the students of different ages oh, I, I would say even of all ages uh, a huge service it is in many respects like a comic book convention but there's a noticeable emphasis on the academic aspect of them and the variety of them. And I think that a lot of people who normally wouldn't go to the con, the comic book conventions, the cons as I call them, and they go to this would be pleasantly surprised, one, by the interaction you have with authors of these books and artists, which is sort of a, a, an interesting third dimension to reading, right? You're, you're actually getting to meet with the creator and, and you can, you know, see what their worldview and, and how they've created these characters, which is a, a fascinating uh, exercise. Right. Uh, and also the, the variety of things that are available. There was a, I wish I could remember these guys, but there was a couple of gentlemen who wrote a comic book on the, on the First World War. And there are some serious topics that comic books and graphic novels do cover that really illuminate learning. And that's that's one of the great things that Whitcaf does. It, it brings you into contact with the authors and the artists, and and then people like me who actually teach literacy through the medium of comic books. And it gives you a chance to talk to them, to get their materials, to sort of move the curtain, the curtain or the veil behind some of these books, and, and actually talk to the author. And that's so valuable for this kind of literature. I always say to parents that a good book, whether it's a graphic novel, a comic book, or a, just a textbook, um, uh, sorry, a book that's more grounded in text, should really take their child by the hand and take them somewhere. You know, and encouraging them to do that reading, to hook them into reading again, and sometimes for the first time, is, uh, again, invaluable. And for a library to do that, they're, they're more or less closing that gap. They're presenting this this wonderful medium. They're presenting the, the creators, the authors, the educators behind them. And then, my goodness, they're a library, so they have a, a stock of these things there that one can almost engage immediately. And that's closing the whole circle. And I think that's a, a wonderful approach. And Ryan Poirier had this to offer. I think it's important. The physical media, like the physical, like the physical actual like paper is becoming more and more of a lost art like comic stores and and stuff like that they're becoming a dying breed and it's yes it's nice to have the digital thing but it's we're relying too much on digital and it just I mean, when you have these little events it just takes it i think it just humbles people in this kind of entertainment it's its own thing and some things need to be old school some things need to be a physical thing and just be how it was like it's, and that's just my opinion. I think, yeah, like, I mean, it, when, when it comes to, like, self-publishing, having, you know, podcasts and social media to help get your work out there or get other people to notice it has become, like, a blessing to these days, like, versus back, like, in the like, early 90s, 80s, where you had to, like, mail everything by snail mail, wait for mm-hmm. a response. But at the same time, it's just the way things are now is kind of made us forget about how it was and i think when libraries and other you know conventions stuff that physically has paper in your hand and the smell of comics and the smell of books you can't replace that and future generations are going to forget about it and it's like people who are more nostalgic and continue to do these things keep it alive i, th- I think that's very important Thanks to all the creators for the chat. You can discover more about these creators online and through social media. You can find Jay Torres on Twitter at Jay Torres Comics and online at jtorrescomics.com. 
You can discover more about Dan Collins on Twitter at Dan the Writing Man and on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Canuck underscore fan underscore Dan. You can discover more about Dave Bishop on Twitter at Renerd and on Instagram at Renerd Bishop and online at Renerd.com. You can discover more about Jerome Cabanatan on Twitter and Instagram at J R O A M C A B. You can discover more about Derek Chow on Twitter at Derek with two R's, Chow, two, the number two, and online at DerekChow.ca. You can discover more about Gibson Quarter on Twitter at Gibson Quarter and on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Gibson underscore quarter and online at Gibson Quarter 27 art dot blogspot dot com. You can discover more about Kathleen Lacey on Twitter at R-E-T-H-Y underscore zone and online at KathleenLPortfolio.com. You can discover more about Carpos Collective on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Carpos Collective and online at CarposCollective.com. You can discover more on Twitter about Comic Book Canada at ComicBookProjectCanada.com. And you can discover more about Ryan Poirier on Twitter at R-P-O-I-R-I-E-R underscore author and online at accidentalcreations.ca. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also check out the TrueNorthCountryComics.com website and follow along on Twitter at TrueNorthComics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the video channel. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2020.